All right, so Niall Niami has finally spoken out about the financial status of his $500 million spec project that he's calling The One, and today we're gonna talk about it. Now, I've never done one of these reaction style videos before because to be honest, I'm usually just not a huge fan of them, but I've covered this Niall Niami topic so much here on my channel. But I felt like it was only appropriate for us to watch the highlights of this interview together. And for anybody who clicked on this video and hasn't heard the backstory, I'll give you a quick summary. So there's this developer, Niall Niami, out in Bel Air, California, who started his career as a film producer, but over the last 20 years or so, he has been building these super luxury mega mansions. Niall is well known for his luxury spec builds that are priced anywhere from $30 million all the way up to $100 million, but for the past 10 years, he has been working on his biggest project yet. This project is at the top of a mountain in the heart of Bel Air, and it is so unique and exclusive that he has nicknamed it The One. The house is crazy at 105,000 square feet with basically every amenity that you can think of, including seven swimming pools, a four-lane bowling alley, a movie theater, a 50-car garage, and a nightclub. I actually had the opportunity to tour this amazing property myself, and I featured it here on my YouTube channel, so if you're interested in seeing that, I'll link to parts one and part two down in the description. Anyways, the one has been facing some financial troubles for the past couple of years due to the developer falling behind on his loan payments. These are loans that are estimated to be over $165 million in total as of the last report. Niall Niami has been pretty quiet about the financial status of the one. Up until now when he sat down with YouTuber producer Michael for a 16 minute interview to talk about what's going on. In today's video, we are going to pick out the highlights of this interview, watch them together, and I'll give you guys my thoughts on everything. So let's get into it, but really quick before we do, if you guys wouldn't mind, if you could hit the thumbs up button down below this video before we go any further, that would really help to support my channel. I'm gonna put producer Michael's video and thumbnail right here, just in case you guys wanna go watch the whole interview for yourself there. It's titled, the truth about the one foreclosure, Niall Niami reveals all. And I gotta say, producer Michael, really great title and thumbnail, but you just posted a video that's basically guaranteed to get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views, and you didn't even spell foreclosure right. Anyways, let's get into the video. Today, we're here with Niall, and he's gonna to explain to us some of the things that have been going on with the one, the biggest house in the urban world. There's been some rumors out there that the house has gone into foreclosure, the price is now 350 million instead of 500 million. What's going on? Tell us all about it. So great setup here by producer Michael. He's getting right into what we all wanna know, but kind of funny watching Niall react because he looks like he's about to go to war. He's cracking every single knuckle in his hand. I bought this house, this land in 2012, and I started developing it. And during that time, I was a very different person. I was married and like everything in my life has changed completely 180% from l losing all the money I had to pushing through and coming up with the craziest world changing idea like doing pay-per-view platform events at this house. Okay, so my initial reaction so far is that Niall is already skirting around the question. Producer Michael asks him what's going on with the house and he starts talking about 2012 and being married and the pay-per-view events. So for anybody who doesn't know what's going on at this point in the interview, about six months ago, Niall did another interview with this same YouTuber and during that interview, he told Michael that his plan was to instead of sell the house, turn it into an event venue where he does massive boxing matches in the lawn. Who knows if that'll actually happen for sure, but the point here is, stop talking about the pay-per-view events. We wanna hear about what's going on with the house. And I never had any investors on this. We all, I always went from one bank to the next bank to the next bank trying to get this thing made. And I also, from every single house that I built, all the money from that previous house went to the one. So this is not just about like 12 years in one house. This is about 12 years of my life and every single dollar that I've made in that 12 year period went to the one. So if this is true, this is actually kind of sad because we know that over the past 10 years, Niall has built a ton of other massive projects and you would think that he's probably raking in like five or $10 million worth of profits on each one of those projects. But no, what he's saying here is he didn't just take those profits and run away with them. He instead rolled all or if not most of those profits into the one every time he made some extra money. 
And I gotta tell you, after I visited the house myself, that doesn't surprise me at all. If he owes the banks $165 million, I wouldn't be surprised if he put another 40 or $50 million worth of his own money into this place. So let's talk about right now, yeah. what's the situation with the one? Well, I gotta give a kind of a quick backstory. So the backstory is one of the things that, that, that came to me through other people or through a higher power was a real serious way to help change the world. And when I gave them my mission statement in your interview, like that was serious. I mean, that's something I really want to do. And by having a house that has those kind of grounds post COVID, you have one of the only spaces in the world that can do pay-per-view platform events and pay-per-view platform events at that house, like fights with Manny Pacquiao, fights with Floyd Mayweather, fights with big boxing names, can rain money down through the pay-per-view platform that we wanted to do and combining it with the show and changing everybody's life by giving people three-page contracts and putting the trust in them to account was all honest. So one of the reasons I got in this, in this problem is because I fought forever. I didn't want to sell the house because I knew, and I still know today, that there is a higher purpose for that house. So nice job again to producer Michael trying to get this interview back on track and talk about what's going on with the one. But I'm not trying to bash Niall here, but it sure seems like he's just trying to skirt around the question again. I mean, he's talking about the pay-per-view events. He's talking about the backstory again. He's talking about the higher power. He's doing everything he can to avoid talking about what's going on with the house. We've seen the headlines. We know that the house is in default and in a receivership. We know that everybody involved wants the house to be finished and listed for sale, but Niall can't address that at all. Let me ask you a question. When you started out and you had this vision and you started to build the house, was it your intention to sell it or was it your intention to do other things with it at that time? Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. It was to sell it. That's all I, I, I didn't think about anything else other than selling profit. the house. You wanted profit. That's it. Okay. That's it. And, and at what point did that change? Um, after COVID, uh, I, I, I met someone that, that gave me the idea. And one of the problems is, is that throughout this period, as we were finishing the house, I must have been through seven or eight different groups that were gonna resolve everything for me. And when, my re when I say resolve everything, they were going to give me enough money to buy out the partners happily, where they would be extremely excited about the deal. They were gonna pay off the banks and we we're gonna pay off everybody. And then that house was going to be used for pay-per-view platform events, for creating a, a token um, for cyber currency to, to, to be used for a show. There was, it was, and it still is, that still is my but, goal. But where are we today? I, I mean, I, that, I that is what everybody really wants right, to know. I'll tell you where we where are today. Where are we today? This is gonna go one of two ways. All right, so this is another great question asking about Niall's original intentions. And of course, his original intentions were to sell the house. I mean, I guarantee if you looked at his business plan from day one, he probably stood to make $100 million or more on this house alone if everything went according to plan. But I don't know who Niall is saying that he met or who these groups of people were that were saying that they were gonna bail him out, but the impression I'm getting is they were giving him a bunch of empty promises. See, this kind of reminds me of those stories that you hear about of those famous athletes who make a ton of money and then all of their friends and family have all these great ideas for them and all these great business plans. So then that athlete ends up giving all of them a bunch of money and they end up going bankrupt. I hope that Niall has better friends than that, but it sure feels like he's getting duped to me. Anyways, let's see what he says in response to where are we today? It's going to go one of two ways. Right now, as we stand here today, the house has been put in with a receiver from Hanky Capital because Hanky hasn't been paid his mortgage payments and, and he's going to sell the house and hopefully we sell the house for top dollar and everybody makes their money and their profit. That is not my goal and it still is not my goal because my goal is to do these pay-per-view platform events. So I have, I have someone who has become a very, very good friend of mine um, and I trust this guy with my life. And the strange thing is I've never met him before other than on FaceTime calls. What? 
Niall is saying that he trusts somebody with his life that he only met over FaceTime. Again, I'm really not trying to bash Niall here, but whatever is going on sounds super sketchy. He did address the receivership status, so that's cool that he got into that, but then he goes back into talking about the pay-per-view events and then this random guy who's gonna fund the pay-per-view events. I gotta say, I really wish that Niall would just accept the fact that this house needs to be finished and sold and move on from this whole pay-per-view thing. And he is a terrific person and but one of the issues is he's promised me over and over and over and over and over and over and over that he is wiring the money and that's why i've gotten into this rut because he promised me for three months now when we went on your last show i was promised as you know this monetization fund that i called the god fund was going to come in and it was going to monetize and it was going to take care of everything including these pay-per-view events and going out and helping everybody that i possibly could that deserves it in the world but it never happened, and it never happened, and it never happened, and it never happened, and it never happened. But you still think it will? I believe in my heart it will, and um, I received a word from him yesterday that the money is being sent next week. So, so would it be fair to say anybody watching this right now might say you're being foolish by believing this and not moving on to another remedy? Well, I think because I have been down the path with so many different groups, I don't think at this stage in life, there is another remedy other than if somebody watching your show comes in and says, hey, we're gonna give you $200 million and help solve this and we're gonna come in as your partner. I don't know any other remedy. All right, so what Niall really seems to believe here is that this random guy that he met on the internet is going to give him $200 million then Niall's going to take that $200 million, pay off all the banks and contractors and everybody that he owes money to, and then that guy that he met on the internet is going to give him even more money to then fund all of these pay-per-view events and in turn, hopefully make hundreds of millions of dollars at the end of the day. This might not be a popular opinion, but I really do think that Niall has a good heart and his intentions are generally in a good place, but I also believe that he is 100% getting taken advantage of. Looking at the, the worst case scenario, and let's say the house does sell, yes. what type of price do you think it will realistically bring? I have no idea. In today's market. I have no idea. Listen, well, you say in today's market. Today's market's unbelievable. This is the best market we've had ever. I've never seen stuff selling like it is now, so I don't know. I don't know because there is a receiver in, involved in this. Um, Do you think it could be the 500 million? I don't know. So I've probably done like five or six videos on Niall, this project, the whole story, and one of the most common things that comes up in the comment section is people speculating how much the house will actually sell for. Of course, there's people out there who think it'll sell for 100 million, there's other people out there who think the house needs to be torn down, and then there are other people out there who really believe that the house could fetch 500 million dollars. But the reality is, none of us will know how much this house is worth until it's listed for sale and the market tells us how much it's worth and we're not gonna be able to get to that point until the house is finished. No matter what happens, I have incredible, earth-shattering, life-changing news to give people. So tell us this, this, this one thing okay, that so, you want so here, to tell here's us. Here's one, here's one. Okay, I wanted to make the announcement when I was able to say everything's solved and this is what we're going to be doing. We are starting our own bank our own bank that we can take in depositors and but it's a very special bank and it is called the one international bank and when you deposit into our bank you get the first ever i want to polish it up because it's really cool it was designed by me and every depositor will get this a 24 karat gold visa with a real diamond. I've got to admit that is 
Definitely the coolest visa I've ever seen, but what is going on with this interview? Remember, this entire interview is supposed to be themed around what is happening with the one, but now we're talking about how Niall is opening a bank. Look, the only way that I can translate this is that Niall's trying to open a bank so he can get a bunch of people to deposit money into that bank, and then he can use that money to fund future projects. I don't know for sure if that's true or if it's legal, and I can't say that it's a bad idea, but it sure seems like that's where he's going with this. That's not, that's kind of the level of stuff that I'm I'm trying to do along with all of the things that help help the world. The bank is going to be like a regular bank where you deposit money or is this yep. crypto it's or not, what is it? It's going to it's an it's an investment bank so it's 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 for CD deposits mainly. It's more of a, a depository bank rather than an active bank where you have ATMs and things like that. So this that. will be FDIC insured and yes. nobody a, has to worry about losing their money. It's a very secure investment. It's a, it's a bank that we're negotiating, purchasing right now that has a, a Fed wire number, which is super rare. We have, we have the bank. It's a US-based bank. And, um, but again, this idea is linked to the money coming in. So that makes sense. So he's pretty much buying another bank, renaming the bank The One, and then allowing people to join just like any other bank. That's honestly not all that bad of an idea, but again, I think he's focused on the wrong things here. Niall needs to be focused on helping to get The One completed and getting that sold, so then he can move on to being a visionary and taking on all these other great Shark Tank ideas that he has. The fact that he's focused on all of these other things right now, to me, just seems like he's looking for an excuse to be distracted from the real priority here. Is there anything else at all you want to, you want to say? I, or? I, I just want to say to, to everybody, everybody out there, I can't answer all the DMs. I can't answer everybody, but just I want everyone to know that I am trying. I'm not giving up. I'm doing everything that I can in my power to make sure that MockTube has written this to be a positive ending for me. And I am very sure that this new partner, the money will come in next week. And if it does, you will be the first to know. We will do another interview. And at that time, we'll say and tell everybody that it's solved and how we're going to move forward into the future and what the earth changing new ideas that are coming next. Gosh, by the end of this interview, I'm the one cracking all my knuckles. Like I said before, you can tell that Niall does have a heart and he really wants to solve this problem but he's putting way too much trust in this random guy that he met on the internet that he thinks is going to be wiring him all of this money. And I do generally really like his composure that he had throughout this interview compared to the last one that he did with producer Michael. I mean, yes, of course, he's still a little bit eccentric with his body language and with his ideas, but he does seem like he's in a much better headspace than he was six months ago, which is a positive thing for both him and everybody involved in this project. If you enjoyed the video today, guys, just one more reminder to hit the like button down below for me before you go. And let me know in the comments below if you guys had fun with this reaction style video, because like I said in the beginning, I've never done one of these before, but I wouldn't mind doing more if you guys like them. But that's all I've got for you this time. So until next time, see ya.